Hey everybody, here with the deck tech for the deck I'll be playing in the Versus video this week. It is a sweet little brew that Zolt Tacoli took to the top 32 of Grand Prix Taipei last weekend. And we are calling it four color control, but it is a bit of a control ramp hybrid. It's a crushed and tentacles deck. <laughs> as uh, Majors has so emphatically pointed out, it is very much built around crush of tentacles. Although this deck also supplements the uh, power of Crush with Descend Upon the Sinful as another sweeper that leaves behind a sizable body for you to uh, start getting aggressive with. So starting at the top here in this row, we have the sort of early game plays that help you set up your mana and sort of sculpt the, the, sculpt the game. Um, the key here are the Oaths, Oath of Nissa and Oath of Jace, that help you make your land drops, help you find your sweepers uh, or your sweet creatures, and they also come back to your hand when you cast Crush of Tentacles, so you can recast them and get a lot of value that way. And the other key card is Explosive Agitation, because as you can see, we have a four-color deck here, <laughs> and so uh, we're going to need a, a healthy dose of mana fixing in order to <laughs> cast our spells on time. Vegetation does that while also ramping, so setting setting up our ability to surge the Crush of Tentacles or uh, cast apart the Water Veil with Awaken, and then Traverse and Oath help us find appropriate lands, as does Oath of Jace, and uh, and Anticipate. Yeah, I feel like this deck is like, it's just a checkbox. Like, do I have a double blue card in my hand? All right, I'll get two islands. <laughs> do I have Descent Upon the Sinful in my hand? Okay, I'll get two planes. Do I have Dragonlord of Tarka? Okay, I'll get the mountain. Super lucky, maybe I can get planes plus mountain. Yeah, and then I can basically cast all my spells. Maybe. <laughs> uh, the uh, next level of the deck are some of the early creatures that allow you to maybe do some chump blocking against aggressive decks or just develop a bit of a battlefield presence before your sweepers can uh, come online. And once again, they're all cards that can give you value once they get returned to your hand with Crush of Tentacles. And they are Elvish Visionary, the best card in the history of magic. Reflector Mage, the... <laughs> Most annoying card in history. The standard. actual best card in, in <laughs> standard. And Nissa Vastwood Seer. Oh, I, I take it back. Michael That's Majors, the best card Unrequited in Love. Yes. Unrequited. Uh, yeah, Nissa probably loves you too. Me and Nissa are cool. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe Nissa just doesn't like you in that way. That Then it would be unrequited. Maybe Nissa just wants to be good friends. And and you've always just wanted to continue more. with the deck deck. <laughs> And then uh, the last of these is a singleton den protector that can let you um, can allow you to start looping crush of tentacles once you get into the late game. So just every turn you play your morph, flip it back up, get your crush, cast it with surge, and you have an eight eight, and they have nothing, and they they are basically stymied at that point. And eventually, you start casting other spells along with it, just getting a ton of value before you find a part of the water veil to close the game. And then at the top end of the deck, we have some of the, the real heavy hitters, and they are Dragonlord of Tarka, yet another card that when Return of the Crush of Tentacles, we can recast. Got this Jason <laughs> Raveler of Secrets that is sort of the one outlier in the deck. Ross has got nothing for this one. I, yeah. I saw this coming a mile away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that would play. It's a powerful card. I, I think Jace is actually criminally underrated, to be completely honest. Um I, I don't even think there's actually a good reason why he hasn't seen a lot of play, because he actually compares very well to Obnixilis, and he can like handle two creatures without plussing. Um, I think Jace is just really good. Yeah, but unlike Obnixilis, you don't get to play Jace in your deck with Grass for Darkness, Ultimate Price, and Languish. Right, <laughs> but uh, the, I think the major issue that people haven't played with him very much is they assumed that he would be directly competing with Friends Prodigy, but... Uh, JVP just hasn't seen much play in this format. Yeah, I mean, blue just has has been underperforming as a color in this format, yep. which I think is the what the major issue holding Unraveler Secrets back. Yep. And so if we see uh, some strong blue cards printed in Eldritch Moon, then I could definitely see Jace uh, doing a lot more, which uh, we have seen so sense. far. Actually, I think yeah. there's like three or three or four pretty good standouts as of this video. So yeah. And then uh, the real, the biggest heavy hitter of the deck, Part of Water Veil. So you have all these things that uh, give you a bit of a battlefield presence, and you're, you're ramping, you're getting a bunch of lands into play, and then you finish them off with this gigantic time walk, make a 6-6 six, six craziness. That, um, yeah, it's just a really powerful card that we've actually seen in a few different decks. <laughs> yeah, but Part, part of the Water Veil is, is definitely uh, picking up steam. It's, it's, it's on its way to becoming a mythic staple of standard. Yeah, I mean, it's just that it is... 
impressive how much damage. I mean, it's it's almost like a twelve twelve because you get to attack twice with the six six. And sure, you have so many things that can uh, affect their side of the battlefield between. Uh, descend upon the sinful reflector mage Jace so that you, you can sort of get to the point where they don't have much going on and then you part and suddenly the game ends before they have a chance to get back into it. Mm -hmm. Our mana base is um, <laughs> it's a, it is it is it's, a thing. It's, it's a thing of beauty. Yeah. We got our, our our key card in the mana base Evolving Wilds that finds all of our colors. Mm -hmm. We have some the, the deck is essentially Bant colored so all of our dual lands are centered around uh, uh, the Bant focus with Prayer Stream, Canopy Vista, and Lumbering Falls. And then obviously our basic splits are focused on uh, primarily green because green is what allows us to find our other colors most efficiently between Oath of Nyssa, Traverse, and Explosive Vegetation. And then blue and white, we need we need at least two of each of those because you want to be able to find enough to cast, crush, or descend off of one Explosive Vegetation. And then we really only need the single mountain for a couple Dragon Lord of Tarkus. So numbers in the mana base make sense. Having this many basics in a four color deck has me a little bit worried, even if Evolving Wilds is very powerful. We're going to have a lot of draws that are maybe three basics, and we've got a double blue card, a red-green card, and a blue-white card, and uh, it might not come together, but between the between all of these cards up at the top that let us either find lands directly or look at extra cards in our deck, give us that velocity, uh, I think the mana base should come together pretty easily. And we got a combo. Ooh, a little nine nine hex proof. Yep. Can uh, so I need, I need nine mana, and then I animate this, and then I need four. So I need fourteen mana in play. Yeah, no problem. And then I can part the water veil, animate the uh, awaken the lumberg falls, activate it, make it a nine nine. Attack. No, you got to activate it first, so you mm -hmm. can't get responded to. True, true. And then you smush them, and yeah. then you take your extra turn. And you smush them again. Yep. Double smush. Mm -hmm. That's what we're calling this deck now. Change change the marquee. It's double smush. Let's do it. And uh, that is about it for the main deck. You can come back and check us out for the sideboard. Okay, welcome back for the sideboard of Four Color Control. Got a bit of an aggro plan, I guess, in the, the post-board games. Are a little bit more aggressive than we normally would be with some additional creatures. Uh, Dragonlord Ojutai are really powerful if your opponent is just trying to load up on removal spells for your threats. Especially when uh, backed up by Negate, you can just sort of sculpt the game or leave the Ojutai in play untapped until you find a way to defend it from a removal spell and start attacking with it, close the game up pretty quickly. Or pair it with Tragic Arrogance. Hmm. You can pair anything with Tragic Arrogance. You can pair yeah. Dragonlord Dramoke with Tragic Arrogance. Yeah, but I, I think this is actually a pretty cohesive package, these three cards. Yeah, just become a sort of uh, four-color Dragons deck. I like Dragons. Yeah, Dragons are sweet. I don't know, angels are kind of cool with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Linval is sweet with Crusher Tentacles. We got the Dragonlord Dromoka, just um, a bit of life gain against aggressive decks to go along with our sweepers if we want to go that route. And then Tireless Tracker, I think, is a great option for any any ramp deck, really. Any so, deck. <laughs> sure, sure. But we've already seen it in aggressive and mid-range decks. And uh, we've seen a little bit of it in ramp decks, but I think it slots particularly well there because... It can come down early in some of your better draws and just trade with a creature if you just need to buy time. And if your opponent is playing a lot of removal spells, it might soak one up. But if it stays in play and your opponent's trying to save their removal for your high-end threats, then you're going to just accrue three, four, five clues pretty easily through your ramp spells, especially something like Explosive Vegetation. And then once your opponent deals with your first, maybe your second wave, then you have... Uh, a way to gas back up and, and find a, a third, maybe even a fourth threat to to close the game out. And all those dead draws that a ramp deck would normally have in the late game, because they have all these Nessus pilgrimages, explosive vegetations, and the like, become draw twos. Yeah. And so you're able to tear through your deck pretty effectively with all this excess, excess mana that you have and just find all your threats. Yeah, I, th I think any green deck with four Evolving Wilds in it is should just play Tireless Tracker. I think you need a really good reason not to. Yeah, the card is, is incredibly powerful. Just be, being able to accrue resources without putting in any effort. You're right. just playing lands as your normal part of the game, and you just build up. Yeah, yeah, the card just naturally snowballs itself, which is really powerful. Yep. And then uh, the bottom rows are a little bit more uh, of interaction. We got negates that we, we said can come in against removal spells, especially when... We're a blue deck. We got negates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Against uh, 
uh, extra removal spells. And then Immolating Glare is a nice little uh, cheap removal spell against aggressive decks that is also an instant to uh, Delirium up our Descend Upon the Sinful in a deck that really does not have a lot of instants uh, to begin with. Yeah, I, I think that might be the actual reason it's here instead of like Declaration in Stone or something we've seen more traditionally, but... Um, not sure exactly what the logic was, but that makes sense to me. Yeah, I agree. And um, yeah, sideboard looks really sweet. A lot more powerful cards. We can swap in and out, sort of shift between either being more of a ramp deck or more of a control deck, uh, depending upon the matchup. So like the looks of it, and let's yeah. see how it plays in the games. I'm excited to see a Oath of Nyssa Ojitai deck. 